Hello everybody and welcome to a run an unscheduled vlog. Again, I'll be always with these vlogs. This is gonna be unedited, so be prepared for a lot of ums and awkward pauses. On top of that, I'm getting over a bit of a cold right now, so I'm not getting over, I'm still in the middle of it, but I've managed to clear my nose enough to be able to talk at least some of it without sounding like a stuffed gorilla. Anyway, I'm a little late to the party on this one. Basically speaking, about two weeks ago, at the time of recording, uh, the Kalos League, the Kalos League ended. The Kalos League finale happened, and Ash, of course, lost. And everyone seems to be pissed. I pretty much spent almost a whole week, well, I've spent a whole week today with a bit of a family tragedy, but I've also spent it kind of compiling a bunch of the massive complaints against, oh, I've lost Kalos League. And like I've heard of people who have been completely turned off of the Pokemon completely turned off of the Pokemon anime because Ash lost this one particular league. And I'm looking at all of it, like I know there's some people who are like me and we're all looking at it like you all are surprised by this? Like Okay, so I have my own explanation for this. I've seen a few videos about people who also have their own explanations for about how they kind of expected Ash to lose the Callus League. Okay, so first off it seems like a pretty random league for Ash to strand with when, like, Kalos, Kalos is a region, it's it's not a major milestone for Ash. Like, it's it's a decent milestone for Ash, like, pretty much like every region is, but it's not, like, a major milestone. It's not like your Kanto's, your Johto's, your Sinnoh's. Like, it's it's just a regular region that Ash travels through, catches some Pokemon, eventually, you know, does the Pokemon League and loses. It's not a major milestone. Yes, the Ash and Ninja thing is an important thing, but it's not like a super major milestone that is super important to Ash's overall character character study. Like in terms of character, Ash hasn't really changed all that much since he was in Gen Five, and Gen Five was him going backwards from how he was in Gen Four. So yeah, he's pretty much still the same baseline character he's been since Gen Five. And pretty much all the character arc stuff that happens for other characters, it's happened with Clement, it happens with Bonnie, it happens with Serena. Like, these were three that have the character development. Ash pretty much stayed the same all throughout it. And yes, he has some stuff with Greninja, but again, it was something really too major that affected his character too much. So, basically speaking, let me talk about where I consider Ash as peak of character. I consider Sinnoh Ash, Gen 4 Ash, the peak of Ash's character. This is an Ash who's been through three previous regions, has gained plenty of experience from said regions, <laughs> And has managed to incorporate various different new strategies from observing and watching other people, such as the counter shield, the whole spinning technique thing for dodging. This is a super intelligent, a more intelligent, more focused, more, more dutiful version of Ash. That he's basically at his peak. It's also funny. This is also Brock's final season, and Don have your own character story throughout this thing too. And the Asino was one of the longest seasons of the Pokemon anime. So it kind of makes sense that Ash has the biggest character arc throughout this entire arc. And throughout the entire thing, there's the stuff with Paul. I'm going to get to all that stuff later, because it goes into a whole story arc structure thing. But in terms of Ash's character, when he gets to the Pokemon League, he decides to use all of his Pokemon. Like, I don't just mean the Pokemon he's traveled with through Sinnoh, like he's done for, like, Hoenn, he did in Unova, he did it in Kalos. No, he decides to use... All the Pokemon that he's gotten from previous generations. He calls on his Cyndaquil, which is also a Kalava, uses his Snorlax, uses his Heracross, and just manages to basically use all his Pokemon at their full advantage. Use them. They've, they have this like an off day for training on their own. Ash calls on all his Pokemon to help him out. And I have to admit, that was the season I thought Ash was going to win the Pokemon League because this is Ash at his most intelligent, at his peak of character. And he's calling upon all the Pokemon that he's had from, from the previous generations. Now, everything on paper states that Ash is going to win this league. But, then Tobias shows up with his Dark Ray and kicks Ash's ass with his Latias. I'm going to be honest here. I kind of expected that when I found out there was a character running around with the Dark Ray as a partner. And I met Tobias is interesting. He's He seems like a random element that's just thrown in there in order, that, in order for Ash to lose. Like, he does feel like that, but I've also heard an argument that he has his own story somewhere that's never been told, and I, I feel that's an interesting story to be told. Like, he's a guy who managed to capture two legendary Pokemon, 
That's an interesting story. However, he'll never get that story. So he just stands as he is in this kind of weird limbo of being completely interesting as he stands as a character, but never really being explored. Which is kind of the worst fate for a various rival character that's not really that much of a rival character. So again, this was Ash's peak. Gen 5, Ash kind of dialed down decibels a bit on his brain and has been the same since. Like, you can, he's been a bit more intelligent in this season than he was Generation 5. However, he's still the same reckless idiot. He doesn't have any of the maturity he had in Gen 4. He doesn't have any of the strategy he had in Gen 4. He's just a bit less of a reckless idiot than he was in Gen 5. So it was pretty obvious from the get-go he wasn't going to win because he wasn't that intelligent, he wasn't that smart, he wasn't that strategic. He wasn't Gen 4 Ash, and he wasn't the proof of Gen 4 Ash. He was uh, a kind of Gen 3.5 Ash, if you want to go, because he acted like his Gen 3 self, but a slightly better version of his Gen 3 self. So, yeah. Basically speaking, Ash wasn't at his peak in this season, so I don't understand why everyone was so... Oh, Ash is definitely going to win this one. Like, if you if you trolled if you trolled YouTube and typed in Ash Kalos League before the Kalos League actually came out, there would be a ton of videos saying Ash is going to win the Kalos League. And I was looking at all of them like, really? You all think that? I mean, I'm happy that you're all so positive. But at the same time, Ash is, like, if, if Ash had a sudden character spike in the middle of Gen 6, middle of Gen 6, I would have believed it. I would have believed the hype of everyone else. But he stayed the same. So I was like, I, I don't see it, guys. I don't see what you're all seeing. And... I see. I hear all your arguments here, but I'm not seeing it. <sighs> so, the second point I like to bring up is who Ash lost to, Alon. So, basically speaking, Alon serves a role as the big rival character. So, basically speaking, every generation, Ash has one big rival character that he either overcomes or loses to. In Generation 1, it was his big rival character was Richie, who served as his mirror opposite, and Ash lost to him because he couldn't control Charizard. In Generation 2, he lost to the... Uh, the guy with the blaze again. Gen 3, he lost to the dude with the Meowth Puss and Boots. Gen 4, he lost to Tobias. Gen 5, he lost to the dude with Lucario. Now, these weren't Ash's main rivals. These were not, again, these weren't Ash's main rivals. Alon is different from all of them because he serves a role as a main rival. Which is, I think, a lot of point people believed why Ash would overcome him and win the Kalos League. So basically speaking, the Pokemon League serves as a big climax for Ash's conflict with his main rival. In Generation 1, well, he didn't really have his conflict with the main rival. He just managed to overcome and get past Gary's slot. Gen 2, we finally had his major conflict with Gary, who still served as his major rival character, and managed to beat him, which served as a bit of a catharsis for about for three and a half seasons, for about three seasons worth of Pokemon anime. In Gen 3, his big rival, well, he didn't really have a big rival in Generation 3, did he? Uh, okay, then skipping on to that. In Gen 4, he had a big rival in Paul. Now, Paul was similar to Alon. Ash had encountered Paul a number of times. He encountered him earlier than Alon, because he was one of the first people Ash was introduced to when he got to Sinnoh. And Ash constantly fought Paul and lost almost every competition they had with each other. Like, he managed to ring the Poke Ringer thing, but I don't think it actually counts as a battle as much as a competition. But either way, Ash kept losing to Paul over and over again, and so there was a bit of catharsis, again catharsis, when Ash beat Paul and then lost to Tobias. Now, finally, we have Gen 5 with Trip, who was a rather lackluster uh, ultimate rival character who Ash lost to constantly before he managed to beat him, not in a full battle, but in the preliminary round. So you can kind of tell that the Rise of Gen 5 weren't really at their best. But I want to say that was also partly because the major rewrites had to do for that season. So cut to Gen 6, we're at the present. Ash and Alon. Ash has lost every battle against Alon. So you think that the Pokemon League would serve as their final competition. It would serve as their main conflict. You would think that if it wasn't for the Zygarde stuff. That's right, the Pokemon League happens, unlike most Pokemon Leagues, which happen at the tail end of the plot line. This one takes this one takes a t- takes a note from Gen Five and continues the conflict through the Pokemon League and manages to start wrapping it up at, right after the Pokemon League. Like at time of recording, the first episode of the end of the series went off, and it seems like a pretty good setup. So basically speaking, with the Zagrar stuff still not wrapped up and Alon being an unofficial member of Team Flare, it's understandable that him and Ash would have another form of conflict one way or another. And so it makes total sense why Ash wouldn't win against him in the Pokemon League. 
but he would still beat him in a sense when it came to the Zygarde stuff. So basically speaking, their final conflict hasn't happened yet. That was their little cow sneak was their test of skill, in which Lana proved he has better skill than Ash, but he but they haven't had their final conflict yet because the Zygarde stuff hasn't been wrapped up. Olaf is technically a member of Team Flair, he's on Lysander, and Ash is going to go against Lysander. Now there are going to be two major conflicts in this which is going to be Ash versus Alon and Ash versus Lysander. And the way I see it is Ash and Alon are going to have a battle of wills, in which case Ash manages to overcome Alon and show that he's a better trainer or a better person and prove to Alon that Lysander's kind of an asshole, in which case the two of them will team up and take down Alon or Zygarde. So, sorry for the chair, it's rather squeaky. <laughs> so yeah, this the Pokemon League game wasn't their final conflict. It wasn't the peak of their climax. We're in still in the middle of their character arcs together. This isn't Alon's climax. This isn't Ash's climax. It was just a stepping stone because we saw the Zygarde have to go through. So I don't. So it's understandable from that element too why Ash when it win the Pokemon League this time around. And secondly, there's the the lastly the major thing about this this show has proven Ash will probably never run the Pokemon League unless they're going to reboot it. So the thing about Gen 7 is everyone says it's going to be the last season before there's going to be a major reboot. There's a lot of evidence about alchemy, reincarnation, all that crap out there. Do I buy it or not? And they have some convincing arguments. I just don't think there's a lot of water for it to tread on right now. I have to wait for the actual camps to come out first. But either way, we still have Ash. Now, if Gen 7 is going to be the last region before the reboot, why would they get rid of Ash right before the reboot? They would keep him around, then have him win that league, and then reboot the entire series. In a sort of New 52 style reboot, in which there still still be some old elements that are still around, but hundreds of new elements. In this case, probably 100 new Pokemon. So, it doesn't make sense for Ash to win Kalos if Gen 7 is going to be a reboot. It doesn't make sense for Ash to win Kalos. In terms of the plot, it doesn't make sense for Ash to win Gen 7 in terms of his own intelligence. I mean, it doesn't make sense for Ash to win Kalos in terms of his own placement and how he's not at his peak anymore. It also doesn't make sense concerning the whole plot structure and the fact that we still have to wrap up the Zygarde plot line. So basically speaking with these three points, I don't understand why people still believe that Ash is going to win. And again, people are completely outraged about the fact Ash didn't win Kalos. Ash is going to be forever a loser. And I have to say, I don't, you're missing the entire point of the show. Like the show is a is very much about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey that Ash goes on. Yes, eventually he may win the Pokemon League, but it's never about him winning the Pokemon League. It's about him chasing his dreams. Like, yeah, there's a little message that's kind of underscored the fact that maybe you'll never achieve your dreams, but it's all about the chase of said dream, about Ash becoming that Pokemon master he always wants to be, his journey with his friends and his Pokemon. It's not about the destination. It's very much a show about the journey. And it's never been as present as in this generation as the Pokemon League arc, and this one is incredibly short. Like, seriously, they're only, like, four or five matches in total and about ten episodes as a whole. At not even ten episodes. So, yeah, this was an incredibly short Pokemon League story. This was, basically speaking, this was just a Stephanie's done for Ash. Kalos wasn't that big of a region overall. There was nothing too major about it in terms of Ash's character or in terms of his partner's characters. Uh... So basically, yeah, it's completely expected that Ash will lose. It's completely expected that he'll move on to Gen 7. And maybe if that, if everyone says true and Gen 7 is in fact a much less reboot, Ash is going to win the Gen 7 League. He's going to win the, the Alola League. And then the series is going to reboot. So it makes sense that Ash would lose in Kalos. Okay, so... That's my belief. If you have your own beliefs, I, I'll be happy to hear them. I, if you believe Ash is gonna was supposed to win, I'd like to hear your thoughts about why you think that. If, oh, if you if you agree with me and you think like Ash was supposed to win from the beginning, then 
yeah, what do you, do you have your own points to say? I mean, yeah, it's good you agree with me, but I also want to hear your points on your side. So, yeah, that's another vlog down. Probably seven more to go. I'm half asleep right now. And I probably take some more medicine. So, I will be seeing all of you in the next video, next vlog, next whatever's coming out. So, yeah, till next time, everybody. Hopefully, we'll live in a world people can stop complaining about a kid to animate for like five minutes.